Hello, welcome to another episode of Bay State Backcountry. In today's episode, I'm going to share a bunch of pictures that I have from my through hike of the Appalachian Trail in 1981, when I hiked 2,120 miles from Maine all the way down to Georgia. So stay tuned, the pictures are coming right up. <music> Now we'll get into some pictures from the expedition itself. Um, just a quick note is that in 1981, digital photography did not exist. And so out of the four of us, my buddy Dave carried a 35 millimeter camera. So obviously he had film, he, we had to be stringent about what pictures we took. And so for the entire 2000 mile hike, we really took surprisingly few pictures. And then uh, the pictures that I have here are actually in a photo album, and I've taken uh, pictures of the, <laughs> of the pictures in the photo album. So the quality will vary. So I apologize for that. So as I've said, we started out in Maine. Um, I can't believe we actually don't have any pictures of Mount Katahdin. Um, but starting at Katahdin, we actually had the 100-mile wilderness to start. And so, you know, kicking right off, we were hiking in the 100-mile wilderness. We ran into a lot of northbounders in Munson, that's the, um, the hostel in Munson, and we were told that we would never make it, that it was just simply too difficult a way to go. And because we started off in August, we were seeing a lot of northbounders that were finishing up. So these were hikers who had you know, basically 2,000 miles behind them, and we're starting off um, as green as you can possibly be. So we're going through Maine and we're seeing people finishing up and they're all telling us that we'll never make it. And we didn't really get any respect until right here, Mahusik Notch. So coming down Speck Mountain and into Mahusik Notch, um, we cruised through it. This is the single most difficult mile of the trail. Um, some people say that it can take them hours. I think we actually got through in 45 minutes. We were so psyched out. And then after getting through Mahusik Notch, any through hikers we saw after that really gave us a lot of respect. Not long after Mahusik Notch, you reach the, uh, you leave Maine and you get into New Hampshire. And so the, we were very excited to be through our first state. And when we got to Gorham, Maine, my folks came up and visited and we had a picnic and I saw my parents and Dave's girlfriend came up and I saw my sister and we really had a good time. And then we continued on to the White Mountains. Uh, we love the White Mountains. Um, we're familiar with them. In fact, here we are on top of uh, Mount Washington. This is Lake of the Clouds. There's my dog, Kane. There's the AMC hut in the background. And uh, this was familiar territory to us. So we enjoyed New Hampshire and kind of cruised right on through it. Um, and it's beautiful. Here's uh, the Pemigewasset Wilderness heading towards Zealand Hut. And so um, New Hampshire was beautiful and uneventful and felt like home. And, um, you know, if you haven't been there, I really recommend it. Shortly, um, as you leave New Hampshire, uh, you're going through the Dartmouth Outing Club lands. This is a Dartmouth Outing Club um, cabin that they had there. And then shortly after that, we were into the beautiful state of Vermont. When we were in Vermont, we saw a lot of porcupines. And we actually had issues where if we left our boots out in the shelters, the porcupines really chewed up the shelters trying to get to the salt from hikers that had slept there. You really had to be careful because they would kind of crawl around and try to get your boots. Um, but the Long Trail of Vermont coincides with the Appalachian Trail in Vermont. And it's um, a beautiful, actually one of the best maintained and easiest sections of the AT to hike. Um, frequent shelters, really well marked trail, uh, just cruising on south. And now at this point, we've got a couple hundred miles behind us, and we're really starting to hit our pace and really feeling like true through hikers. Once we got through Vermont, we reached our home state of Massachusetts, where our families came to visit us once again. And at this point, Kane went home. We knew that Kane would not be able to go with us into the national parks in Shenandoah or Smoky Park. So Kane went home with our family after the picnic. And uh, we continued on. and up and over Mount Greylock, the highest point in the state of Massachusetts. And at this point, Steve started acting sick. We didn't know what was the matter with him, um, but we eventually, it got bad enough that he had to go to the hospital, and it turned out um, he had to leave the hike and go home um, once we reached the Connecticut line. 
So once Steve left for sickness, um, we were down to two because Jeff actually left us in Vermont as well. He just had demands at home he had to go home for. So Dave and I continued on south, and we actually ran into a couple of other hikers and started you know, connecting up with a few other southbounders as we were going along. And uh, you know, one thing that was very different for us was that there were so few hikers on the trail. It really was just us, except on the weekends. Um, this is the Graymoor Monastery in New York, uh, where the, the, the monks actually let uh, hikers stay. And they have horses, which is really fun. Um, so the, the Graymoor Monastery was a real high point for us. But um, also one of the other um, hikers from Maryland that we had kind of connected up with at that point when we reached the state of New York, he jumped up and down on the state line and broke his foot. And so he had to leave. That's him standing there in uh, sideways. He had to call and get a ride home due to his broken foot. And then after that, we um, you know, continued on from New York and um, you know, just continued on heading south. When we got to Pennsylvania, we really started to see um, it started to feel like autumn. And of course, now at this point, you get to um, Pine Grove, you're we're at the halfway mark. So we're really starting to cruise. We're a thousand miles in. We had fall foliage, and it was just remarkable. We had the longest fall season. We followed the foliage south. Um, one thing about Pennsylvania, it was very dry. Uh, we often had to hike pretty far off trail to get water. And the trail in Pennsylvania is also unbelievably rocky. Um, you know, just difficult, really beat it on our shoes. And uh, when we didn't have a shelter, Ted, our friend Ted, actually had a, a hammock and he would hammock out. Um, so that's how he kind of dealt with um, the rocky trails. In Pennsylvania is when we started getting our first freezing weather and the days were starting to get short. So we started waking up before sunrise and getting an early start to get the most out of every day. Um, We'd have a little bit of ice in our water bottles when we wake up, but it was really no big deal, and it really was spectacular. Here we are in Maryland. Uh, Maryland was really, really pretty. And it was in the state of Maryland, so our friend Ted, this is his home state. And so when we got to Maryland, um, we actually took our only zero day, and we went to um, Ted's house, stayed with his folks, spent a night there, took a shower, and then we continued on to West Virginia and Harpers Ferry, and this was really pretty momentous to me because it was in Harpers Ferry where I first was introduced to the AT and became excited for the hike. And, um, you know, it was interesting to think of my 12-year-old self being there and then um, you know, being inspired to hike the AT and then to actually be walking there it was really kind of a neat experience. With the cooling weather, we frequently needed to wear gloves uh, in the morning and in the evenings. Um, in this picture here, I got a little bit of Coleman fuel on my thumb, and um, it lit while I was lighting the stove. But it was it was as uneventful as the picture makes it look. And we saw a ton of deer when we were down here um, in Virginia in the Shenandoah Park, which was really pretty neat to start seeing that wildlife. Of course, 500 miles of the trail is in Virginia, so we were there for a while, including on uh, Halloween. We actually wore masks. The whole day on Halloween um, as we hiked. And then Dave unfortunately took a tumble and hurt his knee. Uh, here we are kind of looking at him after he hurt his knee. And Dave had to go home for about a month um, to kind of recover from his knee injury. Here's, here we are saying goodbye to Dave in a hostel in Virginia where he got a ride home um, from the hostel. And then I continued on with Ted from Maryland and also this other guy, uh, Steve, that we met from Maryland. And so for an entire month, um, I was hiking without any of my original Massachusetts friends, and we did not have a camera that whole time. After Thanksgiving, Dave returned to rejoin us um, in North Carolina. And during the month that he was gone, we were in snow. And so when Dave uh, joined us in North Carolina, we got into the Smokies. It was full-on winter. And so at this point in time, I'd been hiking in snow for the better part of a month. And Dave came back uh, with all his New England clothing and was completely ready for the winter hiking. And we basically had snow and, you know, sub-freezing conditions the whole remainder of the way uh, down into Springer in Georgia. But um, I really didn't mind this. Uh, winter hiking and camping is my forte and what I really enjoy doing. 
And so um, basically our plan to be southbounders was working out perfectly because we were getting the, just the exact conditions that we wanted. When we left the Smokies, um, the snow started to subside a little bit. There we are looking back. That's Fontana Dam, and you can see the Smokies behind there. And once we got down to Georgia, it was more just like um, kind of like fall weather. And it was really, every morning was really, really foggy and misty. But we were, being up on the ridge, we were above it, which was kind of neat. We were always looking down kind of on this like foggy, misty type of stuff, which was uh, pretty cool looking. One thing that I haven't talked about is that the shelters had a lot of mice, and so we set mouse traps almost every night that we stayed in the shelter. And it, w it wasn't uncommon for us to catch three or four mice uh, during the night trying to get into our food or to eat our candles. Um, anyway, this is a snapshot of, <laughs> of the morning after, kind of showing you the, the, the mouse cost that you would see in, in the shelters. Now here's a selfie that Dave and I took of the two of us in a shelter in Georgia. And this is Christmas Day, uh, 1981. So we we're out for Christmas, uh, just the two of us. We didn't see anyone else the whole day. We hiked. Uh, like I said, the only zero day we ever took was back in, um, in Maryland. So what do we do special for Christmas Day? Well, um, when we were down in Fontana Dam at Fontana Village, we bought some steakums and we celebrated by eating steakums for dinner. And we also got ourselves some treats. So we got some breakfast cereal. So here is Dave enjoying our Christmas dinner of um, waffles, um, <laughs> breakfast cereal, sugar coated breakfast cereal. And so that is how Dave and I spent Christmas Day of 1981 on the Appalachian Trail, only miles from our southern terminus. Continuing on from Christmas, we continued our, our hike south into Georgia. And as we started getting near, as the miles started to go down as we approached Springer, it really started becoming surreal. It was so odd to start seeing on the signs and in the maps that Springer Mountain that had been 2,000, 1,000, 1,500, you know, 800 miles from us, now was like 30 miles from us and 10 miles from us. I was kind of incredulous looking at the maps. And so then on January uh, 1st of 1982, Dave and I reached Springer Mountain, and we spent the night um, actually right up there on the summit. And, uh, you know, it was, to me, it was a very mo an emotional experience to be there. Um, it was, you know, the, the biggest accomplishment in my life at that point in time. And when I saw that, um, that plaque marking the southern terminus of the AT, um, I was deeply, deeply moved, and um, I was happy, but I wept. Um, you know, I just, I, I can't even express what it felt like. You know, it was exciting to be, to have accomplished the goal. I was very proud of, you know, kind of undertaking it and doing it. But at the same time, too, I was 18 years old. I didn't know what I was going to do next. And so, um, with that elation, um, also came this uncertainty, like literally, you know, what next? And we, um, we took a bus to Atlanta and then got to Nashville and got a ride back to Massachusetts. And when we got back to our hometowns, um, the local papers were, um, they had announced when we were leaving on our hike. And then they, we got a lot of coverage uh, once we got back as well. So for a short time being there, we were uh, kind of like local celebrities. <laughs> 